Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be talking about is in HTML specifically whether it is safe to use it. So I'm already using in HTML in this code example here. So I've created some markup using template literal syntax and then I'm using in HTML to write that inside this user profile element. So the value of the in HTML is going to be markup and when you look at the page, it's not rendered as a string with the h2 tag and the paragraph tag, it's rendered as content according to the underlying HTML syntax. So this is a very powerful tool, especially in examples like this where you're templating and there's no reason to stop using in HTML. So in HTML, it's not inherently bad. And the reason it is fine to use here is that we have full control of what's being rendered to the page. So when I'm looking at this page, I can be certain that there is no malicious script that's being run. I know that it's just some HTML markup. So in HTML, it's very good for templating. You can create multi-line strings like this and render it to the page. And this is a lot faster than using a method like create element to create individual HTML elements and then add content inside them and then append those to the DOM. So that would be a rather lengthy process this way is much quicker. Now you can see here that there's no actual name for the user in the h2 tag and there's no bio text inside the paragraph tag. So let's change that now because this would be a more typical example where content is not being hard coded but it's being inserted inside of the template literal. So before this tutorial I already created a name and a bio text and I'm going to use the references name and bio to insert these into the string I created and this is being rendered to the page now. So again this is a good use case for in HTML because I know what content is going to be inserted into the template literal. It's going to be these hard-coded values here and so when I'm looking at the page, I can be confident that there's no malicious script running in the background. I have full control over the source of the data that is being rendered to the page. So the bottom line is that when you have full control over the data source, there's nothing wrong with using in a HTML. It's a very powerful tool. And in situations like this where you're doing templating, it's indispensable for writing a template string like the one I've created to the page. The issue with in HTML is when you don't have full control over the source of the data that is being written to the page. So here I've hard coded it, but sometimes you might be retrieving data from your own server or a third party server, or it may be user data. So in these situations, there is a risk to using in HTML. And the risk is that a third party creates some malicious code and that ends up being rendered to the page. So for example, a malicious script, and then every user who visits this page is going to be exposed to that script, which could do all kinds of nasty things. So you really wanna prevent third parties being able to run JavaScript on your website and users being exposed to that. So let's say instead of creating a nice bio text like here, a user instead creates some malicious code to render to the page. So for example, an image with an SRC, it doesn't matter what the image is. The important part is that the user then uses the on load. So when the image loads, they can then run JavaScript here. So I'm not actually going to write some malicious code here. The point is just that it runs on the page and that shows you that users are exposed to potentially malicious third-party JavaScript. So for the image, so there's something that does eventually load. I'll get something from the Unsplash API. So the image, it really doesn't matter. The important part here is that there's an onload with some evil code in there. Now, when we look at the page, you see that JavaScript is running on the page and this isn't something that the webmaster or developer intended. We intended for this to be a nice bit of bio, but instead 
JavaScript is being run on the page. And this means that everyone who visits the profile page of Rick Astley is going to be exposed to whatever this code is. So this is the risk of using an HTML when you are uncertain about the data source. Now, it isn't really realistic to stop using user data on a lot of apps and websites. A lot of the content is user generated. So now let's talk about how you can at least minimize the risk of users being exposed to issues like the one I just showed you. So the first way is to simply not use in a HTML where it is not necessary. You can still render HTML to the page though using the create element method. So what I'll do here is recreate a markup without the template string instead using the create element method on document. So there's a H2 element that I want to create. So I'm still creating HTML here, but I'm not using the in HTML method. And I know that what I'm creating is just an element here, H2 and a paragraph. So I'll save a reference to both of those. And then I'm going to write some content inside of them. So with the H2, I use text content, not in a HTML and I write name there. And for the paragraph, I want the text content to be the bio. Now, instead of using in HTML, I can just use a pen child one after the other to append those to the profile element that I've already selected. So the first one to append would be H2 and the next one to append is going to be paragraph. So if we take a look at this now, you see that the malicious code is not running. It's being rendered to the page as a string, but I've still recreated that markup HTML here. There's still a H2 tag and there's still a paragraph element. And so those are being inserted into the DOM. And then because I'm using text content for the actual user input, it can't possibly run a script. It could do if this was in a HTML, but text content, it's just printing it here verbatim. Okay, so this is one solution to the issue. Now I'm going to show you a second way that you can protect users while still using in a HTML. And that is by using a HTML sanitizer. So this is a third party package here. There are others available. I like using this one, Dom Purify. So you can find a CDN link for it on CDN.js. So what you need to do is to first of all, import it into your project. I'm just gonna put this up here in the head. And then you can go ahead and start using the library. So to access the library, you call DOM purify, and this has methods on it that you can use. In this case, you want the sanitize method. So the way this works is you pass in some HTML that you want to sanitize. That means to remove any malicious parts from, and that is still going to be rendered as in a HTML to the DOM minus the malicious part, which is this on load. So there's still going to be an image. So it's still rendering as HTML, but this package has cleverly removed the on load attribute from the string. Now, if we take a look at the markup underlying this element, you see that that on load has vanished. So you see that the DOM purify library has removed the on load attribute and you're left with the SRC attribute. So this is useful for situations where you still want to use in a HTML without having to create individual elements and text content like this. This allows you to continue writing markup like this and you can rely upon the library to remove any malicious parts. Now using a sanitizer like this, it's never going to be 100% effective in removing malicious code from code that you pass through it, but it will reduce the risk of users being exposed to malicious code. So you saw in this example, how the onload attribute has been removed from the image.
So the bottom line in this tutorial is that in a HTML is a very powerful tool. You shouldn't stop using it if you're certain about the source of the data that you are rendering to the page. If you are uncertain though, then there is this security risk and you probably want to take one of the two steps that I demonstrated in order to protect your users. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video because it helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.